So basically what happened in December, which is uh, by that time, you know, I'm like, I don't know, 140, 150 days into this, you know, everything's going really good. Everything's completely consistent, you know. Um, I'm probably at about 85, 86 kilogram. We go to Dominican Republic for a family vacation about a week before Christmas. And just upon arriving back, returning, one or two days later, I'm in bed with this horrendous um, stomach or abdomen pain. Mark, how did you find Carnival? Yeah, so a bit of a long story. I guess it goes back almost 15 years ago. Um, got, um, you know, got to know the Atkins uh, revolution or so and end up me and a colleague at work. Uh, I guess we had both kind of put on a few, a few pounds and... I guess we kind of, I can't remember if I came across Adkins or if he did, but we were close colleagues and we, we shared it and we kind of both jumped in. So I read the book and, you know, I was, I was never a big vegetable guy. I, you know, I, I always liked, you know, uh, protein and um, so, yeah, so that was how I came across, you know, kind of low carb or keto or Adkins at that time. Uh, carnivore, on the other hand, that was probably more like three, I guess, two years ago, maybe maybe even less than that, maybe one year ago. What happened was during, you know, I had gotten on Atkins, I had gotten some success, and maybe I'll get into my story a little bit, but, you know, quite a bit of time went by between, you know, first getting on Atkins being successful for about six months or so and and kind of kind of always slipping into i guess the dirty keto type of thing you know whether it's keto bars whether it's adding a little bit of this of course i drank alcohol at that time uh, sometimes a little bit more than than i'm proud to admit um but you know what would happen is um what would happen is you know i was never really obese uh, but i was never lean you know, I, I never really had a six pack. Um, I played sports when I was young and whatnot, you know, but then over time with drinking beer, with, with a little bit of fast food, we're not really taking care of myself. You know, that's where the situation was, you know, about 15 years ago where I said, oh, OK, Atkins, let's go. Um, and, you know, that was with some level of success. And not too long after that, I got um, an opportunity because this was in Canada. I'm working in manufacturing, automotive parts, things of that nature. And I have an opportunity to move to China. I uh, had been married not too long, had an infant, uh, six months old infant. And I had an opportunity to get, you know, expatriated uh, to China around 2004. So you know, relatively healthy, you know, active, pretty energetic, you know, very healthy, never diabetic, never real health issues, you know, but always a few, you know, a few pounds, you know, especially in the midsection. And, you know, in China, things kind of went up and down, you know, as far as weight was concerned, as far as health, lots of eating out, lots of not always healthy food, quite a bit of drinking sometimes on a social setting, you know, uh, and through, you know, what's supposed to be a couple of years, it ended up being 10 years. It was a bit of a yo-yo during that time of, you know, yeah, I'm losing, you know, I kind of re always kind of refer back to, to Atkins, which I had discovered, you know, a few years before. And I would apply, you know, to the best of my ability, some type of uh, low carb situation but again, always with alcohol, you know, not to a completely crazy excessive amount, but, you know, I would say more than moderate sometimes, you know. And then it ended up that I would, you know, kind of yo-yo about maybe five or ten pounds. You know, I would get to a level that I wasn't quite happy with. 
I tighten up the things, you know, and, you know, um, and everything kind of went, you know, status quo when everything kind of went on and on and on. But finally, you know, we came back to, to Canada around 2014. And that's where, you know, a little bit more um, social media access, a little bit more, you know, international, you know, kind of information and stuff like that, you know, kind of start getting into YouTube, start following some low carb channels along with some hobby stuff. And that's where, you know, step by step stuff starting to, to slip in, you know, with the algorithms. Um, it took a while because I wasn't really looking that much at the low carb uh, stuff. I was subscribed to a couple of channels, but very, very occasionally I would I would listen to uh, to some of it. You know, I always had that in the back of my mind that this is something that I could do not as a crash, you know, six, 12 months thing, but I'd like to be in a, in a maintenance situation where <clears throat> I reached a certain point that I was satisfied with and I would just keep, keep that maintenance level. And, um, you know, but a lot of it was focused on the career cause I had, we had spent a long time in China and I had to find my footing in Canada. By that time, my two teenage dollars were getting a bit older and we kind of got fed up with some of the things in China. So we wanted to, to be more uh, in the Western world and we wanted to have a better uh, environment for our family. So I, I'm the only breadwinner. So, you know, I and I'm on a fairly high level in the automotive world, kind of like a plant manager level, you know, director level. So you know, I was, uh, I had reached a fairly high level in China. And so I wanted to kind of maintain that level in Canada, but there was a bit of an adjustment, you know, <laughs> needed. Um, and really what came to a head, you know, was during the pandemic. That's when kind of things kind of went off track a little bit for me with regards to, you know, I was working in another in another province so i wasn't eating you know whole foods you know made by my wife or anything like that i was i was eating by myself but you know when the big c happened when during the pandemic you know then i i defaulted a lot more to the fast foods uh, a lot more of the convenience um i really took a even a more of a liking to red wine so almost on a daily basis i was having you know, a few more than a few glasses. And by the time, um, I guess by the time January 2021 came, that's when I decided to give up the alcohol, kind of cold turkey. So that was, um, and it's only really around August of 2023 that the carnivore thing really, well, probably a few months before is when it started trickling in on the YouTube stuff. And then it was like, my God, is this even possible? I can like not even eat ve vegetables and, you know, get what I need. And this is a healthy thing. And this is, you know, and I, I really, really fell into the rabbit hole when it came to, you know, studying about, about, um, about carnivore probably from like, you know, the yeah end of the first quarter or whatever, spring 2023. And, you know, uh, kind of going back to, yeah, okay, low carb, yeah, it makes sense. Learning about all the seed oil stuff, uh, learning about a lot of, you know, not just net carbs, but total carbs and, and just learning just a hell of a lot about it, really kind of digging into it. And I guess, it just kind of overflowed to the point where I said, okay, I'm doing this. Um, you know, I guess, again, I'm living, I'm kind of home on the weekends with the family, but at, in the week I'm by myself and I'm working. So I kind of had to go all in and, I, you know, I was going to do my shopping. I was going to get my own, my own food. I was going to cook my own thing. So I had zero, you know, people that were going to, you know, provide for me or do for me. It was a, it was an opportunity to do everything by myself, you know, and 
Um, so I kind of dove in both feet in August. Um, at the moment, yeah, I was, I guess we could talk in kilograms or pounds, uh, but, you know, typically I'd be around in the 90 to 93 uh, kilogram. And when I reach, you know, 93 or especially 95, that's when I'd say, oh, I got to put the brakes on. I got to get in the low, you know, I got to get back to, you know, 88 or whatever, you know, whatever that number was. And uh, yeah, so let's say 93, that'd be like, yeah, but over 200 pounds, right? About 205 pounds. And I'm 5'11", and I'm not, you know, huge. Uh, but, you know, that was maybe 28% body fat, you know, if based on what the scale was saying, that scale that's got the magnetic, you know, whatever thing. So might not be super, super accurate, but at least from a reference point of view, probably about 28, 30. So it didn't really look that obese. But on paper, I think it, it, it's equal to obese, you know, with that kind of body fat. So jumped in uh, both feet. Uh, I was at around 90 to 92 kilograms at the time. So it wasn't, wasn't at my worst. I wasn't at my worst when I started. But I had fallen into eating a whole bunch of fruits. You know, after I had quit drinking and beginning a, beginning a you know, whatever, you know, last couple of years, I had just, yeah, I didn't really understand that, you know, the fructose, the, the, the sugar. I just thought, yeah, fruits are healthy. You know, I had some of the worst, you know, I had, I loved pineapple, you know, the grapes. And I found myself, you know, snacking a lot, you know, and on a lot of yogurt and not, not the Greek yogurt, but some of the other, you know, yo the flavored yogurts. So that had been more my my weakness rather than the, the the sugar cakes and you know the donuts and never never a big big sweet tooth but the fruits and and, and that kind of stuff and you know i found i had a bunch of inflammation like i had sore lower backs and i had this kind of issue you know uh <clears throat> more and more and i thought well you know i'm 56 years old you know i'm got to be normal then you know everybody's got a, sore back pain and I got a few injuries from sports or from before, you know, broken fingers and broken this and that. So, I mean, it's got to be normal that people feel that stuff. But um, so, you know, and plus a little bit of weight. I wanted, you know, I kind of still had that thing in the back of my head. Why not? Why can't I have a six pack? Why can't I be a little bit more fit and lean, you know, and so let's get on the carnivore wagon, you know, and I got into, you know, the Sean Bakers and the Dr. Berries and, you know, Chafees and, you know, all of it pretty, pretty deep and, you know, still do still in your channel and still, you know, keeps me really, really motivated <clears throat> and a few other channels. So I got into the carnivore <clears throat> and lo and behold, you know, bloody hell, all the pain kind of went away. Like all, you know, whenever I'd sleep on my side, you know, I would need three or four days to kind of recover because of my back. You know, I, it, it would twist the bloody hell out of me. And here I am all of a sudden, you a weekend or whatever. And, you know, I kind of noticed a, a week or two later, I've, I've got no pain. You know, I've got no pain. And it wasn't like probably a big culture shock for me because... I wasn't even eating that much processed foods. I wasn't taking in too, too much sugar. Like I cut back on the fruits and, and that was maybe a little, a little bit of a, something I missed, you know, but my system didn't need too, too much of an adjustment, you know, period. And like I said, I always enjoyed meat. And um, so I guess I had a little bit of a keto flu, but not even barely you know barely no constipation issues you know i kind of felt weird that i didn't have to go for a long time you know and but learning and reading and listening i discovered okay this is normal and i did take <clears throat> some um electrolytes even though i don't really know that i would have needed it you know because uh, i do salt my food to taste <clears throat> and um 
you know, I don't have a huge, huge appetite. It's not like I eat multiple pounds or three pounds of meat, you know, per day. It's, but I kind of settled on two meals per day with uh, probably a pound, a pound and a half or whatever. And, you know, didn't really feel hungry. Um, of course, there was a, a sales guy every week that, you know, that brings donuts and Timbits and everything else. So I had to avoid that, you know. Um, I went on a couple of business trips internationally, which was probably about halfway, halfway through. So I had to be to be careful, you know, but I was able to to stay pretty much carnivore. So that that worked out really good. Um, and I lose weight, but not in a tremendously fast way, you know, just basically steady, steady, step by step. I do kind of had the habit of weighing myself every few days at the same time on an empty stomach because I did want to lose the weight, but I wasn't obsessed with it because I know I was going in the right direction. But I was losing a bit of weight. I was feeling, ex you know, completely clear headed. What I think, you know, I didn't really think I had any brain fog, but, you know, I could notice at work, you know, remembering things, just being sharp, just being being energized, you know, not having any any lull in, the, in, in energy. Of course, the back pains and some of the other pains. So obviously inflammation was was a big thing, probably caused by a lot of the fruits that I was having, maybe the seed oils uh, a little bit. And I, um, you know, I went steady, you know, and every, you know, I kept kind of a diary or on my phone, I, you know, okay, from day zero to 30, kind of what my weight was tracking every few days or a few times a week, you know, how I was feeling, what was, uh, you know, what was going on. And um, if I had an outside dinner with a customer or something and I had been 99% carnivore, you know, but whatever. So I just make a note of it. And, you know, I went 0 30, 30, 60, same trend, you know, so almost the, 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 the good feeling and the energy that was almost immediate couple of weeks, you know, for the first 30 days for sure. And then the 60 to 90, the 90 to 120 and even beyond was, you know, I, I thought, yeah, maybe I think I added uh, a couple of drops of, uh, of iodine. I read that that might be useful. <clears throat> I was taking vitamin C. Yeah, you know, my, you know, I kind of had them around and I don't know. I thought, why not? You know, so I kind of taken a vitamin C. Um, sometimes vitamin D in, in, in the night, you know, that was the other thing, the sleeping, the sleeping was, was much, much higher quality sleep, just not even comparable, sometimes not even the length, but just wake up, you know, alert. Um, so of course I had zero alcohol even before I joined, you know, carnivore. So that was really good. No juices, you know, basically just drinking water, uh, some kind of carbonated water sometimes, but always, you know, Perrier, always, you know, zero carb uh, kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, mostly eating ground beef or, uh, or a steak, you know, not, 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 you know, not really a ribeye, a ribeye occasionally, you know, something in between a chuck and a ribeye. So kind of a, a midway level steak. Uh, I did a lot in the air fryer. So that was really convenient. And, I kind of nailed down how to do a medium rare steak, you know, so, so on the weekends, you know, I, I, I still do, I have, you know, bacon and eggs, basically almost Saturday, Sunday. Um, so I enjoy that, you know, mid morning or whatever. And then I'll usually have typically one bigger meal during the, uh, the early evening. And that'll be occasionally salmon, but sometimes beef, mostly beef, you know, whether it's ground beef, steak, Sometimes chicken, you know, but it's really primarily beef. And then during the week, I kind of skip breakfast <clears throat> and I still have coffee. So that's something that I still have and seems to not do me any harm. And I'll have a little bit of dairy, uh, like in my coffee, butter, of course, I cook in butter, uh, bacon and eggs and, and that kind of stuff. And um a little bit of uh, plain um, Greek yogurt, a little bit, 
uh, recently with, you know, a little bit of blueberries, not daily, but I've started to kind of add that in. Um, so not the worst of fruits, but uh, maybe kind of try to spice things up just a little bit. And so far, I, I, you know, a few weeks of that, I haven't seen any any ill effects, but I don't want to push it as well. You know, I want to keep it kind of as a treat, you know, a little bit. Um, but um, <clears throat> so I ended up, you know, getting to about 86 or so kilograms, uh, I guess about 120 days into it. So like I said, not a really fast, you know, weight loss, but very consistent. What happens on the weekends? So you're you're on your own during the week. What yeah. happens on weekends as far as are you eating with the family at all or yeah. So what happens on the weekend? Like I work about a four hour commute from where my primary home is. So typically on the Friday afternoon I hike it over to make it back to my home to my family, you know by about you know before dinner time or you know late afternoon ish uh and my wife cooks you know and our uh my mother-in-law she's 86 now and she's chinese just like my wife and you know they uh so my my wife takes really a, a lot of care for my mother-in-law so she cooks and she cooks for you know, my my one daughter was just still at home. My my oldest daughter is in college, so she comes occasionally. And but you know, she's not keen. She's not you know carnivore. My wife's not carnivore, and she's not even ketovore, or she's not really keto. Uh, the good news is, I think she's heading more in that direction, and she's learning a lot more of it. So. You know, a lot of times she'll have things that doesn't quite fit what I want or what I need. And it's totally fine for me to to do my own thing, you know, to cook my own thing. And we we still eat together, you know, sometimes, but it's not a big, big regiment that we always eat together. We're always nearby anyway. Someone might be, you know, in the kitchen, kind of like at a at a, at a stool, you know, I might be at the table, you know, eating. And um, so it's a bit of a loose arrangement. Uh, in the past, it was, you know, hey, we're going to have a family lunch. We're going to have a family dinner. But it's been it's been almost five years that I've been working, you know, this kind of distance away. And when I come on the weekend, you know, yeah, occasionally we would eat together. But since I'm carnivore, it's a lot less, you know, and my wife, she she asks me and sometimes we'll 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 have something that we share whether it's chicken wings or sometimes we'll do salmon so we'll eat that together or she'll prepare some other you know fish in a different way but i would say a good 80 percent of the time i'll do my own thing and i'll eat carnivore um and I'll eat a dinner, you know, by myself on the Friday. Saturday, I'm by myself making breakfast. Sometimes I'll cook extras for my daughter or, you know, the breakfast thing will be will be there. Um, but, yeah, my wife is still very Chinese in nature, and they they do eat some, some vegetables, some of the good vegetables, you know, like cabbage and not really the worst ones. But uh, they don't eat nearly enough meat or beef. That's for sure. And uh, that's what I do. So, but it's really fine. The, fi the family dynamics is fine. So that's, you know, Saturday, I'll usually have stuff in the freezer from before, like a pound of ground beef or a steak or something else, you know. And so I'll have stuff that for me, it's no problem to, you know, to, to do, whether it's, you know, late afternoon, early evening and the families fine with it you know in the beginning it was like oh my god you know well don't you want these vegetables or well what about this but now it's uh they're starting to 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 get um to get the thing you know it's always been i hadn't been for a medical for a couple of years and i had agreed you know a few months ago that i would get a medical done i had get a, i had done a blood test you know about two and a half years ago and I still have the report and I kind of put it in an Excel 
column so that I have a kind of like the before of what it was like a few years ago. And then in a few weeks, I'm going to have a blood test again. And I'm going to try to ask my doctor to, to add a lot of things to it. I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. And if it isn't, I might go my, you know, I think just like in the U S you're, you are able to apply for those things online and they'll send you to a, uh, to a lab. So I I'll have some labs, uh, in, in two or three weeks or whenever. And that's when I hopefully can kind of put that in my wife's and my kid's face and say, look, I'm not missing any vitamins or nutrients. I haven't been eating vegetables. So please let me do my own thing. I'm not pushing on them. None of this on you guys. Well, not too much, a little bit, uh, but, you know, I'm trying to educate them, you know, a little bit more. My wife's actually following Dr. Berg, which is not really the biggest, you know, carnivore doctor, but he touches quite a bit on low carb and he's, a, he's got, uh, she's, she's a little bit diabetic, so she's being careful and, and she's a little bit anxious in nature, I guess, maybe that's my fault, but I don't know. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that's how the family dynamics are on the weekend Then Saturday and then, and then Sunday afternoon, probably around mid afternoon or evening. I, then I hustle back to, to, to my week, you know, uh, situation. And that's probably going to be how things are for the next few years. You know, I have a good gig. I'm 56, almost 57. I'm not really, not really thinking exactly when it would be the retirement. You know, we have some rental properties, so we kind of have a nest egg of something that we've built, like a retirement thing. Whether I can retire when I'm 60 or a little bit afterwards, you know. Uh, but I enjoy what I do. I'm pretty passionate about what I do, and so as long as that's not burning me out or dragging me down too much that's 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 pretty cool so basically what happened in december which is uh by that time you know i'm like i don't know 140 150 days into this you know everything's going really good everything's completely consistent you know um i'm probably at about 85 86 kilogram we go to dominican republic for a family vacation about a week before Christmas. And just upon arriving back, returning, one or two days later, I'm in bed with this horrendous um, stomach or abdomen pain. And um, that I don't think you know about because that, that, that's why we delayed this meeting. Uh, I got into a situation where I had zero appetite. I was in bed with pain for a few days in a row and you know i was kind of you know trying to hang in there i felt bloated felt didn't really, really feel good at all couldn't put anything down then my fever spiked to like over like almost 40 yeah almost 40 degree uh, 40 or like 104 or something like that or almost 105 and we said, all right, this is nuts. Uh, we got we got to go to emergency because if you go to other patients, they, you know, they close at six o'clock and you kind of end up wasting your time. So we went into the emergency, even though they don't treat you like an emergency, I guess, unless you were dying. It's really a, dra you know, long wait and whatever. But that, you know, that evening, I think near midnight, finally got a CT scan. And discovered that my uh, my uh, appendix was in terrible terrible shape, you know, about to rupture almost, you know. So they said, oh, "You're not going anywhere. We gotta have emergency surgery with you like as soon as possible." So the next morning, I had an appendicitis, or they removed my appendix. Um, so it didn't really rupture, you know, before the surgery but it, it kind of fell apart during the surgery and they kind of kept me in the hospital for i think a day or two under observation because it was not like such a clean uh situation in there uh you know but that's where they put a scope in your belly button and they have a couple of other 
you know, things that they get in there. And um, I guess they didn't really get everything out, maybe the impurities or what was infected or whatever. But they still sent me home with antibiotics. That, that was, you know, probably before the New Year's. And, you know, again, I stay in bed for a few days. You know, this is supposed to be something that every day you recover a little bit. And in a matter of days, you know, you're up, you're eating a little bit, you know, you really feel that you're getting better. I wasn't. So after about three more days, back to emergency I go and back into the CT scan. Here I have um, like a seven centimeter by one or 1.5 centimeter area, which is very, very severely infected. And again, you're not going anywhere. You're either going to, we're not sure if it's going to be surgery. Maybe we can avoid it. Maybe it'll just be antibiotics, you know, intravenously. And, you know, most likely we'll put a hose, uh, a drain hose in your abdomen to suck out some of the bad impurities or whatever. So that all went on. And I stayed in the hospital until, you know, let me think now. It would have been January, I think January 8th, uh, late on that Monday was when I finally was sent home again because I had two different type of antibiotics. I had, you know, on IV and they take a while to really work. And then even when it's improving, they want to keep you there a bit longer to make sure, you know, this is not going to go sideways again. So that was a rough, uh, you know, 10 to 15 days. I, I, I say, you know, I didn't, I almost didn't eat anything. So it's almost like I was on a fast, you know, uh, I wasn't really hungry, but I was even having trouble getting liquids in. So uh, the, the IV was, was uh, very necessary. And then, you know, things started to get a whole lot better, a whole lot faster. You know, I had seen some significant improvements. I'm telling you the hospital food, you know, I'm sure it's in, in a lot of fairly developed countries, you know, so I get for breakfast, you know, cereal and I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, sadly, think, sa sadly in the developed countries, the food tends to be very developed. <laughs> yeah. Developed uh, in, in ways we don't like that much developed and highly processed. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, it didn't take me long to tell my wife, bring me boiled eggs, boil me some eggs and put them in a bag and bring them to me. And then, you know, I started eating that and I did, you know, have a few tastes of yogurts and I was having coffees and, but then, you know, like I said, okay, I need more eggs. I bring me a couple of pieces of pepperoni and I started, you know, so I was doing pretty good uh, avoiding all that stuff. But I mean, I needed I needed food, you know, I, I needed, so I wasn't overly, you know, I was getting sandwiches and I was asking for extras. So I was getting roast beef sandwiches, eating the roast beef, you know, barely touching the bread. <laughs> so they, they didn't ask and they didn't even notice, I don't think, but I, you know, so I'm still kind of uh, pretty determined, you know, to be a carnivore, you know, even back then, you know, I did a bunch of research is like, could this have anything to do with me being carnivore? I mean, I haven't found, a, you know, an inch of, a, of, of an inch of an inch, you know, of any kind of information where whatever I ate or how I ate could have caused this appendicitis. I think it's just pure chance, bad chance, you know. So then, you know, of course, my wife is a bit concerned and she's like, she's always thinking, well, you know, it could be because what you eat, how you eat. And I'm pretty, you know, adamant that it isn't because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm stubborn, but I've done my research as well. And I continue to do my research and I don't want to ask the doctors plain and straight because they're going to give me some stupid, you know, remark anyway. So, you know, I'm kind of being smart about, about that. They never asked anyway. They never asked, you know, am I, what kind of thing I'm eating? So I don't tell them. And so then, you know, I immediately get back home and I thought, you know, for a little bit, 
I thought, you know what? It might be tricky. It might be tricky to get back on the carnivore wagon, and it might be tricky to kind of get right back into it. Maybe my system is not adjusted anymore. Maybe, 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 you know. But, you know, lo and behold, you know, pretty seamless drop back into the machine, you know, the carnivore machine. And in the beginning, kind of trying to stick with some easily digestible stuff. But then I'm thinking, what's more, what's more digestible than, you know, highly, you know, nutritious, you know, meat, where you almost have nothing, nothing left after you digest it, you know, I mean, so it's not going to be hard to digest, you know, so I kind of went then I read later on that you should go really, really easy for maybe like four weeks afterwards, but I kind of didn't. Uh, and then, you know, I didn't eat like a whole lot, but I ate, you know, good food. And then, you know, I kind of really felt good, felt really, really good. And last week, I think I was in work, you know, for the first uh, week. And so that kind of, but then I stepped on the scale. Holy smokes bloody hell what happened there you know I, I i have a scale at my primary home and i have a scale you know where i work and my in my home where i work and they're about half a kilogram off you know one one seems to be the calibrated or whatever um the one that's where i work it's i'm always like maybe like a half a kilogram less than the one so I kind of use it as a reference and I usually don't even weigh myself on the weekend because now I'm set in my ways and whatever. But when I got home, I weighed myself, you know, and my last memory was, you know, I think I was at 86 or something like that. And I'm like 79 point something. It's like, whoa, Jesus, that's, you know. That's a, that's a heavy appendix. <laughs> that was a big mama. The, he had a big family along with him, you know? So I was like, bloody hell, you know? It's like I was on a fast for like 10 or 15 days, but that's a lot. So then I start looking at, you know, of course, I think I, you know, I lost significant amount of weight, but I'm looking at myself thinking, yeah, you know, what about my arms? What about my chest? You know, do I look, you know, like I lost like a lot and I don't look like a, I lost like a lot of muscle. But then when I put a pair of pants on, you know, it's like, holy God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm swimming in those things, you know, because I had a lot of weight in my midsection. And kind of in my upper thighs, you know, kind of in my butt, you know, I mean, it kind of didn't really look that bad, but there was a fair amount of fat there. And that whole thing just burnt right off. And to this day, I'm still, you know, even I dropped a couple of kilograms since those two weeks, even trying to eat a lot, not bad foods, but, you know, making sure I eat well. And making sure that, hey, I don't want to, like, I don't want to lose muscle here. So I need to make sure I got adequate protein. Um, I was working out a little bit, you know, before this all happened. So I have a little bit of a home gym set up where I work. And, of course, with the extra energy, you know, I started not working out, like, hard, hard. But I started working out, you know, a little bit. And the intention is to work out even more and maybe, you know, build a little bit more definition and a little bit of um, muscle mass. So, yeah, I, you know, like I said, I was, you know, 79 or whatever. And now I'm like 77, uh, which is about 160 pounds, which is really, I haven't been at this weight, man, for, I think for decades, to be honest with you. And uh, I feel really good, you know, like I said, I, now I have about 20, 21% body fat, according to my scale. So mm -hmm. I'm back on 100% carnivore. I'm not able to really put a lot of strain or weight on my abdomen because it's only been like maybe three weeks of healing. And I got to go another maybe two, three weeks to make sure I don't get a um, like a hernia or some kind of thing like that. 
but I mean, I feel really, really good. There could there could be people watching this video now yep. that are kind of they're they're thinking seriously about trying out carnivore, but you know they've yep. tried every other diet out there, um, and they haven't had yep. success. And they're trying to deal with pain or you know excess weight or both, and you know they're yep. they're they're thinking about carnivore, but they're not quite there. Yeah. One thing I'm interested to know from you is when you when you started and you would you'd be traveling or you go out on the the like you'd have a business meeting over dinner yeah. or something like that. How did you handle the cravings? How did you yeah. avoid the bad foods? Well, yeah, I would. You know. I guess I've been already, you know, in a situation where I don't order alcohol, right? So that's been maybe kind of a precursor or a little bit of a warm-up session towards the other part, right? I would get the occasional, you know, alcohol-free beer. Like, but, you know, that's not that great tasting. There's some that are not bad, but that was before... I went carnivore because there's a few carbs in that stuff too, you know. Uh, if they could make a really good, you know, really, really low carb, zero alcohol beer, that might be something I'd have once in a while. Uh, so, you know, that would that would come up a little bit once in a while. And it's like, hey, yeah, I'm not drinking. Hey, I always say, you know, it's not that I'm not going to drink for the rest of my life, you know. But I've been not drinking for a good spell. You guys fill your boots. I'll have a, you know, I'll have a, I'll have a water with a piece of lemon in it or whatever. So, you know, I always, you know, I think you gotta have a confidence. You gotta have a certain confidence in you and a belief. <clears throat> and whatever comes at you, you know, if you're standing up on your own two feet and if you're pretty confident, you know, most I find most people pretty reasonable. So when I go to dinner. You know, sometimes there's a bunch of appetizers if it's a group setting and we're going to share appetizers. I'll, you know, I'll be completely honest with you. I probably never touch them. There's a very, very occasionally an appetizer, which will be, you know, carnivore. Like, a, you know, maybe sometimes there's a few wings or there's a few pieces of, uh, of meat, but it's not that common. And then usually, you know, we kind of get to order our own um, main course. Usually, usually, you know, occasionally it's 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 a different situation. But you know, and I'll look for you know sometimes you know lamb or a steak, uh, and you know, I don't know. I think one time in an Italian restaurant, I think I had like a maybe a little bit off track with like a veal parmesan or something like that where it's like maybe it's a little bit breaded or you don't know if they use seed oil or whatever you know but because i'm not in sales and it's not like a multiple times per week issue it's more once every few months you know i'll go as close as i can to to, to carnivore and i won't eat my vegetables i won't eat potatoes and um you know, somebody will be across um, and they're, they're like a complete vegetarian. So there's a there's a guy that works uh, for me. He's a vegetarian. And there's another guy, actually, the owner of our company. He's completely vegetarian. And but there's people in the in the, in the crowd, you know, that like meat as well. So it hasn't really come up that much. <clears throat> and we don't we don't do a lot of socializing you know, with friends or families or like that much as well. But what I would say is, you know, don't push it on, don't push it on people. You can say that, hey, you're doing this for a short period of time, you know, whether it's 30 days or whatever. It maybe is because of inflammation or something else. Everybody kind of relates with inflammation, right? So, you, you know, you could say, look, I'm eating, I'm eating in this way as a trial for 30 days. Don't think I'm weird. Hey, you do what you do. I do what I do. 
and I feel better already, so it seems to be working for me. Don't really push it, but be confident, you know, be confident and say, look, you know, hey, uh, you do you and me do, you know, I'll do me. Uh, but again, I think you have to have a certain, <clears throat> you know, you can't be half pregnant, right? Like they say. So it's almost like when you want to start carnivore, <clears throat> it's, you know, I would, yes, you can kind of phase into it if you're into like eating a lot of sugars and whatever. Uh, you don't have to go like all in uh, cold turkey, but the decision has to be 100%. Even if it's just for two weeks or for 30 days that you're going to do it, I think a very solid and committed decision is going to be 80% important, you know, for you to, to do it. And I think if you do make that strong commitment or decision, I think it's a little bit easier to, to share with people, you know, but maybe put a light spin on it. Hey, I, I still might add a few vegetables later, maybe some fruits. This is just the initial part. It's an elimination diet. You know, I'm trying it for a short period of time. Don't think I'm weird, you know, and maybe put a bit of a smile on your face. And I kind of find it, it it rolls over pretty good. I'm not sure what, what your experience has been like. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good, uh, good advice. You know, just put a positive spin on it. And uh, by, you know, by the time, you know, you are 60 days in, your willpower will probably be built up enough so that yeah. it doesn't matter what anyone says to you. You'll just be like, yeah, whatever. I'm okay yeah. doing my thing. Yeah. Like we, we yeah. have something at work where we, well, we have a sales guy that comes in every two weeks and he always has a few boxes of donuts, right? And they're always kind of in your face. And especially those little center parts we call them tim bits in canada we have tim hortons and you know the holes in the donuts they you know they have different so they're like little ball donuts and so you kind of keep you know it's so small you can eat one but five minutes later you can eat another one if you pass by and five minutes later you can grab two more you know so they're only small but you know the bloody things are you know they're jumping at you <clears throat> so there was that and you know, for a good while, I would avoid them. But then you get into the situation, like before I went carnivore, where you'd have the odd one. And then you'd have the odd other one. And before you know it, every time you walk by, if there's one there, you grab one. So there was that. And, and the guy still comes in and the guy still brings those things. But, you know, I I can look at him. I can be near him. Uh, I, can, I can take him to another table, you know, but... But I think, you know, being a few weeks on carnivore, I mean, I, I think your cravings really significantly drop. And then you, you get encouraged because you feel better. I think you got to be plugged into a support system, YouTube. And I think you got to kind of, and you know, continue to kind of listen and, 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 and be, and, and, you know, hear some stories and testimonies and, I think that kind of helps, you know, keep people. And if you're active, if you do a little bit of physical activity, I find that, you know, you don't really want to eat bad after doing that as well. So maybe subconsciously that kind of helps you as well to eat better. So yeah. it's been pretty good for me. Yeah. Hmm. It's been pretty good. Yeah. I was just going to add to that. I think the, uh, I think the great thing about carnivore is when you're doing it, your blood sugar is so stable that when you've done that exercise, you're not gasping for some sugar after you've done that exercise, you know? Yeah. And, mm. you know, I know that I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, riddled with, with health issues. I'm not, you know, super, super obese maybe before before this and maybe on the outside I look okay. But, you know, I didn't feel optimal. That's for sure. I did not feel optimal. I felt like I was getting a lot of kinks, a little bit of brain fog, not really sleeping well, you know, taking, you know, not maybe dealing with stress and sleep in the, in the right way. And so, and that's me, which is relatively, you know, a healthy guy, you know, no, no diabetes, no, maybe approaching pre-diabetes 
for me, it's phenomenal. I'm going to stick to it. It's basically, I, it's basically B, 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 and E, just plus a tiny little bit of dairy once in a while, a tiny bit of blueberries and, you know, that kind of thing. And that's kind of on a trial basis. And maybe I'll get a bit more creative on using, you know, pork rinds and to do different, different type of carnivore things once in a while. But, you know, I love, well, you know, I love what I eat now. And um, That's awesome. I'm really looking forward to the, uh, the blood work so that I can mm. kind of share with my family. Hey, look, I think I'm on the right track and, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And they might, they might catch on a little bit. Now that I'm, what, 160 or 70 days into it, I, you know, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's not, I think it's got a total, maybe a grand total of four videos on it. So I think a couple of, you know, dirt bike uh, GoPro video, you know, GoPro videos and maybe a couple of uh, other uh, unrelated things, you know, but I, I do want to maybe put a little bit of a, a channel or a, or a spin or a section on that and i'm not gonna call myself the ultimate carnivore because i don't want to be banned you know uh <laughs> but you know to talk about nutrition and maybe whole foods and carnivore and, and and to have a few videos and and hopefully start sharing and and stuff like that you know but i'm not quite there yet so um i'm trying to get my uh but that's where i'm hoping to to go a little bit uh later on so can can you share the name of the channel just so that we can uh maybe yeah. maybe if you get a few subscribers from this video that might motivate you to oh yeah start talking about nutrition that would that would 2012 capital b o u g i e so at 2012 uh, bougie or boogie it kind of was a nickname uh, of mine uh, uh, and so but the name uh, you know the kind of the main name of the channel is mark's channel and yeah if i get a few subscribers uh it'll definitely motivate me uh even after this uh call mark thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story today i really appreciate it that uh, it was really a pleasure